Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Lone Star Dowser September 2023 meeting. Um, I'm so happy to see all these faces. And um, if those of you who are joining in person, um, there'll be a sign on the parking garage door with a number to text um, for instructions to get in. So um, let's see a few announcements. Just wanted to say thank you, everyone who has um, made donations. It's um, been so helpful and I appreciate it. I may not have your email, <laughs> um, but it, it is appreciated. Um, and if you want to make donations, that's always helps keep things going. The Let's see. Um, also, we have the Flagstaff Dowsers Conference coming up in October, I think. Uh, and it's an amazing event with lots of dowsers from all over. So um, please feel free to check that out. I think um, you probably got an email about that. So um, tonight we have um, Dr. Stuart Marmestein and he is a chiropractor, but more than that, um, he's really developed his own techniques and does really very groundbreaking work. So I'm gonna let him introduce himself um, and tell you all the scoop about that. But also I'm gonna say, um, because we're together, it's gonna be easier for me if you have questions, if you just put your questions in the chat and I will, um, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll address those as we can, but that's going to be the best way to, to communicate tonight. So welcome, Stuart. Thank you very much. How are you doing, Mary? <laughs> it's been quite a day. I'm kind of glad to be here and just kind of like powering down a little bit. It, it's been quite a week for me. Uh, <laughs> right now I'm in my office where I'm very comfortable, slightly rearranged, but it's Still comfortable and familiar, but the last three days I have not been in my office taking care of patients, doing research, etc. I've been on jury duty, which is an unfamiliar oh, wow. world, and it's it's been an interesting one. Uh, one of the things that I've found out, uh, and can easily demonstrate through muscle testing. Is everybody here familiar with muscle testing? Uh, Do you want to tell a little bit more about yourself? Oh, sure. A little bit. <laughs> I know I, you have quite the resume and, and educational background, so but not everybody may know how talented you are. So please enlighten well, a few people. One of the uh, ideas behind chiropractic is that healing comes from within. And that may not be a fashionable idea at the moment, but I think it's something that we need to go back to and remember is that all of our healing, whether it's from uh, pain in the knee or whether it's from COVID happens from within. And we may use outside methods in order to help us over a hump, but the healing actually happens because our bodies are designed to do that. They're also designed to survive. And if they feel threatened, the body will do some things like change muscle strength. Um, oh, like the, the, the baby being under the car and the mother being able to lift the car up. Yeah. So all kinds of extraordinary things happen, some of them very positive and some of them on the surface not so positive. So if uh, one example that I can give you from, well, I haven't told you about myself yet. If you want to know a little bit more about me, I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, I got old enough to have white hair. And uh, I went to the Texas Chiropractic College where I started in, in January of 1976 and immediately became interested in applied kinesiology or muscle testing. Up until that time, I had not seen anything that looked like dowsing or that looked like it was a cousin to dowsing or a form of dowsing. But I recognize that 
the same inner intelligence that helps us heal can also help us get information. And if we have more information, we can do a better job if we're on the outside with helping to heal ourselves and others. So that's been a lot of the focus of my research, especially the last few years. Um, in chiropractic college, when I first went there back in the 70s, most of the idea about how to move the spine to get it unstuck was to turn it or rotate it fairly rapidly because you didn't need to use as much force if you were fast than if you were slow. Nowadays, I have a different idea, which is that if we can get more lift on the body and more expansion, we don't really need to do a lot of twisting and that the body can primarily take care of realigning itself from the inside out. Well, I know they have um, low force techniques and then <clears throat> also some people maybe aren't candidates for traditional chiropractic. And I know that you have tools to help that. Didn't you have some surgery maybe last time we talked and you were able to have an adjustment um, that didn't um, interfere with that? <laughs> yes. So now most of my work, almost all of my work is non-forceful. And uh, part of what I wanna do with people is get their spines and craniosacral system. I'll define those uh, terms in a moment to where they're aligned and creating a maximum advantage for the nerves that communicate between the brain and the body so the body can heal. And I developed a technique that I call ASAP, which is Assisted Self-Alignment Protocol, which I teach to people with doctorates in the healing arts. I also have classes, and I have one coming up in, on October 14th, to learn some things about muscle testing so that they can find out about things that may trigger muscles turning off. One of the things that's around us and all the time is gravity, and it's always pulling us down and making, trying to make us shorter and compressing things. So the muscles are our main resistance to that force. Therefore, if anything turns muscles off, and many things do and almost anything could under the right circumstances, turn muscles off if we can In including these <laughs> including those so the the things that are part of everyday life like our phones like the food we eat the thoughts we think what we drink and eat the things that are said to us that hit us the wrong way and all kinds of experiences for instance being in an automobile accident, it doesn't just injure certain tissues because of the force and impact of the collision, but it also sets up circuitry in our brain that makes us have reactions you might not expect from things like looking through glass. Oh, like maybe a trauma response that you're not even aware of. A trauma response. So we'll We'll do some demonstrating tonight. Um, we don't have a big crowd in my office for whatever reason. So I may have to do some demonstration on Mary so you'll see what it's like. In the class, of course, we spend several hours teaching you how to test, use the data uh, that I've accumulated over time, which will predictably turn off a trigger permanently. So, so I would highly recommend um, you guys sign up for Stuart's class on, on Saturday the 14th. It's going to be really remarkable. You will walk away with tools on knowing how to what, treat yourself and treat yourself uh, for and treat close family members and friends. Of course, if you're 
not licensed to open up a practice, don't do that. But there's a lot of things that you wouldn't need a chiropractic degree to do that will be uh, taught in the class that could really make a difference in how well you or somebody close to you does uh, after anything from a car accident to a surgery to a, a long automobile ride or, or airplane flight. All of those things. All of those things that are part of normal everyday light, uh, life. And he doesn't um, teach um, non-chiropractic professionals very often. So this is his first class in what, several years? Um, well, well I've, I have taught two this year, but uh, I wanted to make a special invitation to the people who are part of the dowsing community here who haven't taken a class with me before, if they would like to do that, there's a lot to explore. Uh, we'll give you my phone number, the we'll, office we'll, number, we'll, and we'll send out and, a, and we'll send an we'll send email. something out so you can register in the next few days if it's something that interests you. And in the meantime, you'll learn a little bit just from what we're doing here tonight. All right, so let's see. Can I, I can't see everybody's faces there, but um, I can uh, show you like this. Hands. The, oh, gallery view, yeah. Um, do well, we need to ask a question? Um, what are we? Well, I just want to know if when I talk about muscle testing, is that totally foreign to you? Or is that something that you're familiar with and have some experience with from working with another practitioner or with me? So if somebody doesn't know about muscle testing, um, would you let me know and then I'll work to it? Or... <laughs> if, if, but if you know about it or if everybody knows about it already, and if you're if you don't have video of yourself and you want to put put in the chat, what is that? Yeah, uh, we can do good. that. Yeah, just and put we, it in the we chat. Can also, we can also talk about the craniosacral system, which is. Yeah, let's do that. I think most people know about um, the, uh, the Re resistance muscle testing. Right, muscle testing is also is... is also called applied kinesiology, muscle response testing. Don't um, some people call it deviceless dowsing? You could call it that too. And there's uh, one of the things that I also cover in the class is about a dozen different ways that you can test on yourself if you don't have a partner. So I was, the last two classes I introduced that and it turned out that everybody, and I'm sure dowsers would be better at this than a lot of people, but supposing you don't have a uh, pendulum with you, you don't have uh, wire. You know, an L rod an L, or something. An L rod or, if you have your own body with you, you can, you can douse. There, there will be a way you can douse and we cover that. So Mike would like to know a little bit more about. About the muscle testing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Probably a good way to do that would be to just demonstrate that if you're willing. Okay. Okay. Can we do it seated or? We can do it seated. Okay. Yeah. Normally in my office, I don't have people lie down on a table anymore. If there's a really good reason for it, or there's something I want to test that way, bless you. The uh, I have a table, but I often have people sit on that table while I sit across from them and test them. So can you hold an arm straight out in front? Okay. And I like to have the arm parallel to the floor without bending the elbow. And then I go above the wrist. And then as I push down slowly and gently, like I'm gradually easing onto the brake, I would ask Mary to resist and she can resist. Okay. Now there's a number of ways of testing for something called switching. The one that I 
go over the most in the workshop is having the person look straight ahead. Uh, so if you're looking not at me, but it's straight ahead, but turn your eyes to the right and now hold the arm again and notice that changes nothing, which is good. I think we did that one on you a year ago or whenever it was we last met and try turning them to the left. So if somebody had a stress overload or trauma or shock to the system or they flew across many time zones, east to west or west to east, those would all be things that could cause a difference in muscle test. Right, and if you don't know, Mike, the, um, I guess, kind of like with a pendulum, it's sort of like asking the body yes and no questions in it's, a real simplistic way. It is, and it's also looking to see if something that shouldn't cause a stress does cause a stress. So what you just saw as an example of Mary passing two tests, which is a good thing. We, we want people to be stable rather than to need excessive amounts of treatment because something's being missed. So have you ever been in a car accident? Yes. Okay. One of the disturbing things I found out when I started asking my patients this in my real life practice is that almost everybody that I ask probably eight out of 10 will say, yes, I have been in a car accident. And uh, most of them have not been. Uh, well, so, some of them required people to have surgeries and cause some more grievous injuries. But even if it's not that major, one of the things I found, because these accidents take, I'm postulating or guessing that it's because there's glass windows and windshields around us when it happens, I found that people who look through glass will become weak when they they will become weak when they look through glass if they've been in a car accident. Would you be willing to try that and see if it makes a difference in the test? Sure. Okay, so I'm going to uh, get something that you could look through, unless okay. you unless you have a pair of reading glasses with you. Um, Otherwise, I, I do. Let me, let me go get it. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, there we go. Okay. <clears throat> so while we're waiting, what happens is the body makes up a story and it says, this is a terrible thing that just happened. So don't, okay, oh. so just for a second. Uh, okay. And it changes the way we process the stimulus. So, so now if you, if you did wanna, we tested the arm before, the arm was okay. Now, if you put the glasses on and hold the arm again, we get this. Wow. Did that feel different? <laughs> yes, it did. Okay. I was resisting. And probably to you out there, look different. We're not in cahoots with one another. This is not a setup. This happened for real. So if you are in this class tonight, you will learn for free how to fix that on yourself or anybody else. You could get together. With, you could douse for it with methods that you already know. Uh, so just holding the glasses does not cause a problem. You can show everybody you're holding them, but if you look through them, I'll use my pinky finger and <laughs> there's a loss of strength. 
So that's because of how the brain is processing the information. Now I found that for this particular stimulus, there's a pair of acupuncture points that can be used that will make this problem permanently go away. Now, what happens if somebody doesn't get this fixed? What will happen will be that there'll be a slow leak of energy throughout the, the entire time of wearing glasses or driving in a car. If you drive in a car, there will be a windshield. Now, there'll be other random times that are short-lived, like looking out the window for a minute at home, or if you're looking inside of a bottle of pills, but there is a way to work with this. So, I'm Because that could explain why people could be so tired sometimes after driving. Right. Or, um, or having to be in a car. Right. That does explain why people would be tired. And what is happening is that if the muscles turn off, your body doesn't suddenly just say, oh, well, I feel sorry for uh, myself. I'm going to make all of my body parts lighter. It doesn't tend to work that way. So we're going to show how do you permanently, from what I can tell, correct that bad response to a normal everyday stimulus, which is looking through glass. I'm wearing contact lenses, by the way, but I also had this one from having been in car wrecks at different points in my life, and I no longer have the problem. So let's, do you want to fix it or do you want me to fix it on you? Um, have at it. You can, <laughs> you can do it. All right. It, it's easy. They'll, they'll, if you do it, they'll see that you can do it, but it's, it's fun to test it first. So I would urge you, uh, um, do what, to, can I get my pendulum and try that? Would you like to, would that be of interest to people to see? Would, if, that, would that be helpful for me to do it, him to teach what, me to do what, it? Well, That's you would, it. you would use the pendulum, however you're already cousin, right. accustomed to using it right. and see if you get a difference when you wear the glasses. <laughs> Sorry, you're gonna to have to hand me my bag. Okay, here comes the bag. <laughs> okay. So part of what I've been learning over all these years is that things are not what they seem to be. Uh, most of the time. Um, let's see. So Mary is teaching now. So so I guess I would just ask myself a question. Um, am, am I affected by wearing glasses? I guess I need to formulate that a little bit differently. Um, or you could just say looking through glass. Looking through glass. Um, do I experience a trauma response looking through glass? Um, that's my yes. Um, is it more than 50%? Yes. Um, yeah, 100%. So you, you can... Diane, you can do it both ways. He's just teaching to to his way and then just for people that use pendulums so we can both learn. Right. So the, the, <clears throat> there are two different languages. It's not like if somebody speaks uh, English and French, one of them is right and one of them is wrong, or English and Spanish. Uh, it's a matter of there are two different ways to communicate in this time in this case what we're trying to communicate with is our own inner knowing okay right? so, so now no. we've established there's a, a a disturbance in the field right looking through glass for all me right. all right so let's fix it okay all right how about if i talk you through it okay all right because otherwise i'll have the back to the camera so if you put your fingers right on the corners of your mouth okay. and rub like that. Doesn't matter which direction. You already fixed it. Wow. Okay. That okay. was it. That was it. Okay. So let's see. Um, I'm affected by looking through glass. That's my no. Okay. Wow. Okay. So let me put on my glass. And then, um, so I'll have you. I'll do the muscle test. test. Again. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Wow. Right. So supposing somebody has this 
as an issue, and they have many other issues um, that come from something unexpected or unfamiliar happening to us. Uh, I've had mothers come in with their babies and the baby is fussing and this is new territory for a new mother. And if they become weak hearing their own child fussing, crying, uh, having a tantrum, uh, and they're going to be around that baby much of the day and more and more as the baby is awake, that uh, that's a problem. But up until the time that somebody gives birth, they're not a mother. They may be a babysitter, but but they always know An that. Uh, <laughs> but but they but they always know that the baby is going to go back to the mother or to somebody else. They may they may still be thrown off by babysitting. So, where is the most likely situation where somebody's going to get in trouble? The thing that they're exposed to the most. So. That response can also be turned off, and I have. Uh, so, what do you mean? So, like, if a um, a new mother has a baby that cries all the time, like the distress of having a crying baby, is that what you're saying? Yes, that it's not going to affect every. <clears throat> we, with the having been in a car wreck, that happens to pretty much everybody. There are other things that happen to maybe uh, 995 uh, people, let's say 1,995 out of 2,000 <laughs> uh, people will get weak when they stand on a hard surface. You can test this for yourself if you want to. Uh, with new mothers, some may just take it in stride and they just have an instinct that that's okay, that's what babies do. But with others, depending on what may have happened to them when they were little or what they've seen happen to siblings, they may be traumatized or that may, if it's a little bit too strong, micro-traumatized by that. Right, a level of distress. By, by that stimulus. Yeah. And verbal, verbal st stimuli can also um get somebody to lose their muscle strength so like if someone verbally attacked you um yeah you yeah. definitely right so, so is there a way to fix that permanently yes <laughs> wow well, what is what is that one for the verbal attack well the it's going to be based mainly on the words that are used so that's somewhat personal to each individual, but um, I have a list of about 2,500 words and phrases that I've already cataloged and have solutions for. Wow. They work every time, as do the physical stimuli. I only have about a thousand of those. Wow. Is there an expedited way, everything on this list? Um... You know, have to do them one at a time, which one is one time. reason why, since I don't have time to do all of that with somebody during, say, a 15-minute normal office visit session, or even double that for a new patient session, normally somebody comes in and they have physical pain and they want to get rid of it and they want to have that go away. But anything that I would call a quote unquote destabilizing factor is a nice thing for somebody to be able to take care of. And for that, if you're just uh, rubbing points and you're not specifically trying to do something like realign the spine or cranial bones, it might require you to have a license. I feel perfectly good about teaching that to people who don't have a healing arts degree. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so it's kind of like addressing the reaction. Yeah. So someone was saying it seems like EFT. <clears throat> well, except you don't have to, it's much quicker. Yeah. Uh, so if you don't know what EFT, that's emotional freedom technique, or some people call it tapping, where you right. tap so, on different so you, points. So you go body. through a whole series of points. Um, so uh, where we, we have a question from a cell saying, could it just be a name, like a name of a place uh, that weakens the person? And there, yeah, the, I have uh, some universals for... If there's somebody who's been in your life, it doesn't matter what their name is. If you hear their name and that causes a, a problem, I have a point for that. I also have a point for uh, a place that somebody might have negative associations with. So we don't have to have uh, a different uh, point for every name that's uh in the baby naming book, or every place it's in the in the road atlas, there are there are spots for that. So that can be done. So it's much quicker because you don't have to write. It's it's going to be for a verbal thing. It's going to be one point. Rub it for about two seconds, and you're done, and it doesn't come back. That's been my experience and the experience of thousands of people I've taken care of. So what's the most common word that you clear? That's a good question. Uh, it does depend a lot on somebody's experience and what might be their issue. So some people have issues it would be like if you had jeopardy cap categories some people have problems with family money relationships uh, and there are phrases that are part of each of those universes or sub universes mm -hmm. but work for instance so a lot of people find that they're triggered by um the word job <laughs> right the word the word job right so if somebody or if somebody has their own business like today i when i was done with three days of being in court i was picked up by a lift driver who brought me back and uh when covid happened uh his, he had to close his restaurant and now he's hoping to get back to the to the uh, point where he can open a restaurant again. Uh, so let's see. In terms of, uh, I'm seeing a couple of good questions there. So if you're in Australia and you can't come to the session, at at some point. I may have an online version of this class, and while uh, that would go over how to do some muscle tests, uh, and maybe if uh, if a couple took that and they could work with each other, they could calibrate to the point where they had good confidence in their testing and we'd get a couple of things out of the way that would make the testing unreliable, then it might be possible to distribute some of the data so that you could use uh so stay so, tuned. So, 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 you, so you would know how to do that because I recognize that until I would teach other people how to teach the class, uh that would be good. You can uh, request for online press, but we have a couple that okay. want to know about verbal triggers, verbal okay. attack. All right. So um, it's going to somewhat depend on the content. Like supposing somebody grew up and somebody was constantly calling them stupid, ugly, fat, or whatever, depending on what kind of a 
thing they were told they were, especially at a point where they're vulnerable, maybe they're living with parents or guardians who are quick to anger, carrying a lot of frustration and they take it out on a kid, the, the words that they use would make a difference. So can we just pick something? If you are willing to uh, uh, to pick something get, that, you, get that, you're, vulnerable that, that, you're, that you're okay sharing, then I can look it up. I have, since we are in my office, my computer's over there. Uh, we, we might change places or something like that for a short time. Okay. Would that work or not? Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think. Or um... So believe it or not, I can't remember all 2,500 uh, well, what I of, the, of the find triggers or of the verbal ones, but is so. Um, I I had a situation yesterday where someone was really angry and just absolutely malicious towards me, and it was such a shock. It um it really took quite a bit of time to move through that. All right, so. Uh... There's a couple of ways you could approach that one, and that's not the main kind of thing I cover in the class. I mainly do uh, work with the physical triggers, but the principle is the same. Uh, so you could either focus on what they said, or you could focus on how I, how you feel. So supposing you felt hurt or attacked. You, yeah, or if you could you could say or think, uh, I feel attacked, or I feel uh, whatever it is that's real for you, mm -hmm. and we can do that, and then you don't have to get into uh, what what the, what the situation was and who it was with. Okay, so I'll just think about how I felt when that was said. Right, but tell me how you felt, and then I can okay. look that up. Um, yeah, hurt, um, attacked, uh, shock. There was some shock in there. All right. Well, let's, let's test those three and see which one or ones you respond to. Okay. Okay. All right. So try you can try saying one out loud because otherwise nobody okay heard okay so so like i feel or i felt hurt or I, I feel I, hurt i felt hurt okay try i feel hurt um i feel hurt okay so even though it already happened it didn't just clear it so give me a moment i'll go around the table the the laptop is sitting on top of a platform that happens to be my chiropractic table. So I have to take the- We'll switch places. Okay, we'll, we'll switch places a moment. We're very high tech here. <laughs> the chair yeah. method. Uh-huh. Someone was also saying that uh, she was told shame on you a lot as a child. Okay. All right. So. So we so we can we can go there. Yeah, I guess you can um, douse that too. Um, So you are looking at the feeling versus like I what, feel what, hurt what versus they, what they said I to feel you. attacked. Yeah. Right. Um, I have many different 
uh, entries that have that particular word heard in it. Yeah, he's got pages. <clears throat> So if okay, some... let's try this one. Okay. All right. So try my feelings got hurt. Uh, my, my, my feelings got hurt. Okay. All right. So sometime, sometimes if you have one like that, that's an approximate match, but the arm goes down, it'll clear all kinds of other things that would be equivalent or part of that whole experience. So I'm going to get the points for that, and I'll be right back. All right. All right, so we're going to use this point here. Okay, hang on, let me turn up the camera just a little bit down. How about there? Okay. Okay, so this would be the point on the radial artery about an inch off of the wrist crease. And with the verbal ones, I can use either hand. It'll You don't need both. Okay, so now... My feelings my, are hurt. My feelings got hurt. Got or hurt. Or... Okay. Wow. Try my feelings are hurt. My feelings are hurt. Uh, what else did you say earlier? Uh, I hurt. They are. They um. I, I felt attacked. Okay, we didn't do attack, but let's okay. see if it do. Let's okay. see if that even goes. Try. I I felt attacked. Wow. So it even clear that does the whole thing feel different to you? Yeah. Okay, well, if you can describe your own experience, that might be <laughs> helpful. Because yeah. and I've, obviously that didn't take as long as doing EFT, and I don't have anything against EFT, and I'm glad it's in this world. But this is a, it's a quicker way to do it. There may be advantages to the other method, but how do you feel <clears throat> different from the way you um. felt before? I guess lighter is kind of how I would say the, it was still kind of hanging over me. <laughs> um, so, so it was right here. It was actually on this side. On this side. Okay. Yep. So right here. Yeah. So you just squeezed. I just did a little rub. Okay. It, a doesn't, little, it, little it doesn't, rub. it doesn't take a lot of pressure. Like the, if you were going to rub your eye, mm -hmm. that would be enough pressure. Wow. You wouldn't want to hurt your eye. Okay. Is what I'm saying. So it doesn't, lighter's good. That's amazing. So, so I'm noticing that's like a lung meridian. That's also that, where I know people tend to hold grief. Yeah. Yeah. That, um, was, that was a lung I've meridian point. A lot of people die recently. <laughs> okay. So um, I would, yeah. Um, can we check? I feel grief and see if maybe that cleared. Try. Um, okay. I feel grief. Okay. So uh, we'll we'll do that one. So yeah, if there's 2,500, we we could be here all night trying to go through them all. And of course, Mary's not going to have <laughs> all of them, which is one advantage to being together live. But uh, uh, let's get the uh, let's get that one. So your statement was, I, um, I feel grief. I feel grief. Okay. I think everyone can relate to that. Yeah, sooner or later. Well, and we can grieve loss of relationship, you know, okay. dreams, all that kind of stuff. Okay. okay. So the first one I found on there is I'm feeling a lot of grief. So, and it, again, it doesn't matter what, if we did a deltoid test and I pushed down, and then you thought, I'm feeling a lot of grief. I'm feeling a lot of grief. <laughs> just okay. goes down, or if you're pushing your arms apart, this is a, a, an easy easy way to do it. So I'm feeling a lot of grief. I'm feeling a lot of grief. 
And it also does happen to be on the lung meridian. We'll get that one right here. You saw how long it took. She wasn't wincing in pain. Try the same. Um, I'm feeling a lot of grief. Wow. Nice. Wow. Okay, so for so that was like right inside my elbow. Yeah. Okay. Well, it was uh, it was on the thumb side of the oh, biceps yeah. tendon there. Okay. Can y'all cut? Well, this is where my arm bends, but it's the the I can't. The, my the, shirt doesn't really go up. Right, the, <laughs> Sorry, the, the, Well, I could show you on me if that okay. would be easier. I have almost the exact same kind of arm, <laughs> but not the exact same kind of shirt. So it would okay. be. So you're kind of on the outer edge. Yeah. Okay. And right. you just push them. Right. Yep. And that's okay. it. Okay. All right. You're now grief free. <laughs> well, <laughs> feeling that, grief. <laughs> well, well, that's actually an interesting thing you brought up there, which is that the uh, if you just rub the points, it doesn't really do that you have to have the stimulus invoked um, and then rub the otherwise you can go and get a full body massage you'll hit all the points in the body but it's not gonna take care of that you'll feel like you got a nice massage and uh i'm all for that but but what you have to do is first bring it up show it put it on display for the brain and nervous system or consciousness, however you prefer to look at it. It's sort of a blurry, so you, you, blurry you, area. You there. pull the energy up, right? You, you get in touch with that energy, that feeling that I'm going to say the energy of whatever, and then it's present. So it has something to recognize. And then we address the point. And, right. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't even like, if I printed out all of these and had something this thick, I wouldn't just put the whole thing on my head, have a body massage and figure that took care of it. I would go through them one at a time. And that way, what we're doing internally, which is not as simple to explain, will happen. Yeah, but there's a connection. There's There's a connection. But if you don't if you don't make the connection, rubbing the point for a second or two is going to basically have no effect. Like a neutral effect. So now could someone do the same thing with their pendulum and and ask if that was like an area that needed to be um, um, addressed or would you formulate that question? Yeah, they, you could use a pendulum or you could use any of those twelve or so uh, self muscle testing methods. Or if you have somebody that you uh, like to trade with on that, it could be a a good way to help each other. And uh, I think that's a good thing for us to do is when we're not isolated and we have a, a choice to work with somebody else, I think it's nice to be able to do that. Right. Okay, so it says, is it fair to say that from now on, when we feel brief, we have to do the process again? Uh, shouldn't need to. It should be harder for that to come in. So probably future episodes of grief won't feel like the older episodes of grief. Maybe not as traumatic or yeah. as devastating. Um, that's That's been my experience <laughs> with people I take care of all the time. And I've taught classes in this to psychotherapists. So it's sort of... Um, allows it to just be experienced, but not at a detrimental level. Yeah, it, it, ch it changes the pattern of behavior. So when I was uh, in court the last uh, three days. Were you the, doing a few the, things on yourself? <laughs> no, I was, but I was, I was watching what was happening there and watching the defendant who obviously has had a difficult life uh, with getting in trouble over and over again with the law. And uh, unfortunately, there wasn't a chance to 
work with him and try to get to the bottom of why does he keep creating situations that are uh, harmful to himself and others? Wow, yeah, he, he had a little teardrop uh, tattoo by his eye. So it looks like that pattern had been there for a while of creating uh, difficult situations. Difficult situations. Wow. That is so interesting. So you could take someone who's creating, who has a pattern, who's creating the same, you know, um, have relationships with unavailable people or, you know, um, can't hold a job or, you know, those kind of things. And if, if they are interested in doing it, you can't force it on them. Right, right, right. Uh, yes. So oh, that's fascinating. Okay. Someone says, um, uh, she has the feeling of needing to prove herself. Um, okay. All right. So one of the phrases that you could use, if you, if we wanted to see, are, are you capable at this point? I assume you are, if you're interested in being on this call of dousing a phrase and see if you react to it. If you do, I'll give you the solution for it and show you where to work on it at a distance. And you can uh, maybe. Uh, okay, so well, let's everybody um, just ask that question. Okay, so uh, so try. Uh, uh, I need to try, prove myself. Well, try. Imagine somebody saying to you, "You're not good enough." Oh. No one can relate to that. <laughs> okay, well, that's when you would have to prove yourself as it would be yeah. if somebody has said that to you. So if you, everybody in the studio audience mm -hmm. back at home, if you can imagine somebody saying that to you. Yeah, um, okay. Well, that certainly brought some stuff up for me. Okay, yeah. so... Uh, has everybody had a chance to test that in your own way where you are? Does anybody need more time on that? I'm watching the clock a little bit too. I'm 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 watching it too. Come okay, here. we're good. Um, we go till eight thirty. Okay. Okay. We'll go till eight thirty, uh, and then yeah, that'll work. The um, we're having too much fun here, right? We are. Well, it's just fascinating. You're, I love tapping into your your wealth of knowledge. Um, okay, so um. If at those of you watching from the comfort of your home, ask, um, I guess with your dowsing tool, um, you know, bring up that energy of a situation. Um, I'm not good enough, you know, that either you feel it or someone's told it to you. Well, it, there are actually two different things okay. for, for some people that might be close enough and for others, having somebody saying it to you might be different from thinking it about yourself. Okay. So now if everybody has the same thing to work on, then we'll, we'll work it. Okay. Mine seems to be, that's the message that I tell myself. <laughs> the message, so, so if you're telling, if you're telling yourself, I'm not good enough, then that might make you want to prove yourself. Or in some people's cases, it might make them think, why bother? And then uh -huh. give up. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right. So I'll look that one up a second. Okay. If you guys are getting something different, put it in the chat so we can address that too. Yeah. So also she's getting both. Okay. All right. So if we get both, if we get both, and we work, if we work on this one, mm -hmm. it might clear both. Okay. So, so we'll, we're going to work on one and see if it we'll, clears we'll, both. We'll try it. Okay. Okay. I should have worn a different <laughs> shirt tonight. I can clearly see from from where we're going. We we can we're fine. Okay. Uh, 
nobody has to disrobe in order for this to work. And uh, there was a time in my practice where I had to, I had a mentor and everybody had to wear a white cotton robe instead of their clothes based on what that mentor was teaching. Uh, but we, I always work with people fully clothed. So if we go down the arm on the outside, And if you touch lightly, you'll find a little groove that goes across the upper arm or shoulder. Maybe turn a little this way. And then we're going to go and find a second one. It's on the outside of the bicep muscle. And that would be it. Well, we didn't test you beforehand. We didn't. Well, I mean, I, but, I doused. Oh, you doused. I okay. doused. Okay. Yeah. Every place you touched is like gently sore it, it tends to work that way that uh the body knows that this is an important point but it's only an important point in this context if we remove the context it's just a point that may or may not be sore okay so he had his hand on my shoulder and then he went down kind of where you you i guess the, you have your lateral bicep so it's yeah is so it it's, it's going to be on the outside of the bicep the outside. in that second little groove that goes across. Do y'all get where that is? Okay. okay. All right. So, um, and then it's just a, so it's on the inside. It's going to be on the, on the outside, on the outside. Okay. And then so you just did your groove gentle. one, groove two. Right. Just that's enough. So it's a second groove that's yeah. down. Okay. But because it's so, it's so specific it cuts through needing to go through a lot of unnecessary points on your way to finding the one that's going to okay, help. So let's check. Um, let me see. What was the question? Um, You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, like I, I, um, yeah, I, I, I'm not enough. Was that not good enough? Not enough. What was our question? The, um, I'm not good enough. Yeah. That's a, that's a no. All right, and try try imagining somebody okay. saying to you, you're not good enough. Yeah, didn't know we would know. So those of you that had them both, um, did that address both for you? Okay, we're getting thumbs up. Nice. Awesome, yay. Well, that's exciting. I feel like we're, we're doing something good in the world here. Absolutely. Because if more people feel like I am enough, I'm good enough, uh, I'm worthy. It changes the world, not just you. It changes everything that you're emitting to the outer world. Okay, so I have a question for everybody on here. Check and see um, that I'm worthy. It just dows, I, I am worthy. Yeah, we're getting some nose. Getting some nose. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was, I was told, shame on you a lot as a child, says um, someone. All right. So, there, so there's a number of ways. Again, there's always more, more than one way to do things. That's one of the advantages of, I've had of having... Uh, been in practice since 79 is i've seen there's more than one way to do things so i don't disrespect other people's approaches to things but i always try to optimize and find an easier faster gentler non-forceful way to get the job done if i have uh, any choice and what i've found along the way is it seems like there's always a, a choice to to do it easier i don't think so. i don't think that uh the amount of effort we have to put into it is uh is really required i think there I think, is the right. easier softer I've, gentle way right. <laughs> so what All right so uh the, so in terms of the uh to fix the do we have worthy right? or the shame because they're they both all right, so, all right so the worthy is handled the do you, do you, if you imagine somebody now saying shame on you, does that elicit a 
uh, negative response in your dowsing or your self muscle testing or whatever you're doing there. Because I have one for that specific phrase. As you can imagine, that's not uncommon. Okay, I'm not. Um, so, Teresa, um, why don't you check and see if that <clears throat> still shows up for you? You may try worthy and come back to the shame. Um, oh, she says it's clear. Oh, nice. Okay, nice. Okay, what, nice. what did it for you? Do we think it was the um, the enoughness? No, yes, so I am enough. Yeah. I am enough. So sometimes once the energy blasts through the thing, our own inner being finds ways to say, oh, well, if that's the case, then all of these other things that I used to think are no longer applicable. Okay, so I have a question. Okay. Um, there's a lot of, uh, notice with myself and a lot of people that I talk to that sometimes um, when you need to learn, you, you, you need to make a change in the way you do things. And there is so much resistance um, that it seems insurmountable whether that's for health or, um, you know, doing your business in a different way. Do you know what I'm saying? So, okay. I have a tool for that. And if can uh, anyone else relate to that. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll teach you a method that I use for that. That works very well. And if you will send me an email address, I'll send you a PDF file. It's only two pages long that will teach you how to deal with that. But, uh, since I can't hand it out to you through the laptop that Mary brought in, um, uh, I can send that. We can include it if you want in the replay. Would that be better or would you rather just do it to the individuals? Uh, let's see. I just as soon know who's, who's getting them and I don't mind them being shared because uh, again, it's a matter of if somebody ever does come in to see me, there'll be that much less work to do. And uh, that's always fine. Uh, yes, uh, if you want to just put your email address in the will you, in the will chat. You, will you have any trouble harvesting that and sending it to me? Um, <clears throat> and put your name with your email address if you don't mind. Yeah, it makes it a little easier. I think I can copy and probably paste it and send it to you. Okay, yeah, because it's just a text file, right? Um, or Let's if I have see. a resistance, we'll clear that. <laughs> I okay. think it'll be fine. All right. But, um, all right. So, okay. All right. So I'm going to demonstrate something, uh, that's my version of something that's been around. Um, do we want a muscle test first to see the level of resistance or does that matter? doesn't matter. Okay. That, that's my answer is it doesn't matter. If you're curious, it matters, but other than your curiosity, it doesn't matter. Okay. So um, we may want to reposition the chairs just a little bit so that your profile is showing. Okay. So if it, I can do this. How's that? That'll, that'll work. Now, some people have resistance to using negative language when they're doing something, but the for what I'm going to show you, which is called the temporal tap. And there are other methods. There, there are other things that go by the same name that other people who are either recognized or self-appointed authority say, no, that's not how you do it, but this works. Okay, so um, can you hold this arm? Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody can see the arm this way. This isn't a bad way to do it. So if you hold the arm, okay. 
Good. So supposing I make a statement to you and we'll see if you have resistance to my statement. Okay. If you have resistance to it, your arm is going to stay up. So if I say, Mary, I know you're going to try to hold your arm up, but there's no way you could possibly hold your arm up if I push down. It's going to just go straight to your lap. Okay. So you heard my words. Everybody heard what I said. Everybody has enough language skills to know what I meant. And something inside of you said about my uh, statement that your arm was going to go down. What, what happened inside that, how, what did your resistance um, look like? No, it's not. I can, I can hold my arm up. Okay. So basically, no, no way. You can't do that. Uh, I'll show you whatever. Okay. Now the right side of the head accepts negatively phrased instructions. The left side, positively phrased instructions. So on the, if the statement has the word not or an apostrophe T words, I will tap on the right side. This is not EFT. This is not uh, emotional freedom technique. This is a temporal tap. Okay, yeah. so just to kind of let me recap. So because my inner message was, um, you know, I'll show you. I'm right. I'm not going to lower my arm. So that was a, a no. That was a negative. So you're going to work on the right side of yes. my head. Okay. Yes. If my language well, no, had no, been... No, actually, the reason I'm going to do it on the right side of your head right now is because that's the side that's toward the camera oh okay uh but if you can imagine that she has a very similar looking mirror image <laughs> left side of her head uh i'll show you how i would do it with both kinds of language okay all right so if i tap starting at the eye and i make an arch over the ear it's a staccato tapping that looks like that by itself that doesn't do anything but if I say, I cannot hold up my arm, my arm isn't very strong right now, for instance, and then we test your arm again. Okay, so I'm going to say again, your arm's going to go down as soon as I push on it. You can tell me when you're ready for me to push. I'm ready. Oh, wow. Okay. <clears throat> now, of course, for this, uh, if you're not using muscle testing and you are using another form of dousing, you can tell when you've gotten the interchange that you're looking for. Uh, now, here's another interesting thing. You, you might think that after this long a period of time, it would have worn off. But let's see. Are you ready? Right. You can hold it up, right? Right. Ta so make sure you're really ready to hold that arm up. Okay. okay? <laughs> so if I wanted to use positive language. Okay, well, let, let me just oh, okay. pause one Sorry. second. Okay, too, so I'm just thinking about. Too much, about, too fast. No, 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 it's good. I just want to. Uh, so I can even imagine like parents or someone saying it's here. You know, you can't do that. You, you know, fill in the blank right? Some person in authority could, does it work like that too? It could. So that's why we want to be sure that the right people get the message and the wrong uh, people aren't in the right place to hear how they could abuse or manipulate people using. But we're also learning how to correct that. Energetic techniques, right? You're learning how to correct it. Okay. So supposing somebody all your life said uh you can't do that or you're clumsy or you're uh you'll never you're, be you're, a success you're, you're no you, yeah. right you'll, you'll never be a success or you suck at math or whatever it is then uh you can say what would i rather think or feel instead of that you take out the stuff you don't want you put in the stuff you do want. So this is a different technique from what we just did uh, with the specific uh, 
acupuncture points for specific words and phrases, you can use them together or you can use them on your own. So for the people who are saying, I live far away, I can't take your class, you don't have it ready online yet to do that, but what can I do in the meantime? If you, if you have memories of things that created trouble for you, you can say, I am no longer affected by, and you could do that on the right side, because no, not, mm, yeah. goes over there. Where you could say, and then you put in the opposite. So supposing on the left side, which I know you, most of you probably can't see through Mary's head, but you can like imagine. You turn. Oh. Or does it matter? Uh, if everybody would like to see you turn, that's fine, but then we probably just change places. Oh, okay. Let's change. <laughs> Musical chairs tonight. Musical chairs. Okay. See, everybody else missed the party. Too okay. bad. So this is so this is the, my left uh, side. the left or positive side. A mnemonic for it is left and plus both have L's in them, right and minus both have I's in them. Okay, but I, I can send you one of some suggested phraseology that you can use if you're sending in the email address. Okay, okay. perfect. All right, so if we test the arm again, question is, did our changing places have an effect on the strength of the arm? No. We got, we got <laughs> our answer. So if I say, my arm is strong. I can easily hold up my arm. It changes. Wow. And so that's how that works. So would that affect the resistance? Or do we have to put in that specifically? Well, all right. So in this situation, we chose the arm going up or down because it's visible to others. But supposing you have your own issue with something like you have resistance to uh, investing in your business, going to visit somebody uh, that you haven't seen in a long time because the last time you saw them, it was unpleasant or whatever it is. Uh, it doesn't have, you don't have to do anything about it having your arm go up and down, you don't have to use muscle testing. You don't even have to use dousing. You can just say, this is what I want the new me to look like and feel like and smell like and everything. And this is what I, so now negatively phrased language doesn't mean it's negative. So if you say something like, I don't have any problem with, that's actually a negatively phrased way of saying a positive thing. I don't, there, any, I don't have any problem with gluten. <laughs> that, well, that could be something like, uh, I can cross the highway on foot and cars will bounce off of me. So, uh, okay. so you wanna have respect for, if, if, if you have celiac, known celiac disease, you have an intolerance, I've found that I can test to find out if somebody does, but the best thing a person can do is severely limit or eliminate gluten from their diet in a situation like that. If they have a, a sensitivity to something that they're breathing or eating, most of the time I can help with desensitizing the person to that substance using natural methods uh but so foods and that would be an in-person thing that would not be a do-it-yourselfer so i guess it could be um but if more it, situational right so if the resistance is to uh making a change in your life whatever that is like supposing uh part of you saying well i'd like to 
I know it would be very good for me to, to get up at 6.30 every morning and start my day. My best hours are going to be in the morning. But another part of you is saying, yeah, but. So when, yeah, but is another way of saying resistance. Mm -hmm. Or no, but. Or I don't think so. So if you have a little voice whispering in either one of your ears saying, that ain't going to happen. And you want to get past that, then you can work with uh, both the behavior and the motivation behind the behavior and do the tapping. It works very, very well. It doesn't take long. And if you are doing it yourself, uh, the price is right. <laughs> yeah, someone says if you there? jump off a building, you're still going to crash. Um, uh, yeah, there is the thing called gravity. Um, well, I don't want to be the test case for that right. personally, but if somebody... Uh, Having seen people fall much smaller distance and break their feet and ankles uh, and sometimes compress their backs, I don't recommend uh, being the test case for that theory. But if someone, I don't know, wanted to, yeah, make that exercise or the, the, um, um, do something, have an online store for their business or sure, all those things. Right. And, you know, it, it doesn't mean you don't have to do the other work that goes with, right. with that. But, even, but, but it's addressing the resistance. Right. But sometimes the resistance is about uh, not feeling capable of learning, not being, uh, being afraid of failure, being afraid of success, all of those things, which you can douse for and find out what's behind this. If you know what's behind it, and you can work that angle as well as just changing the behavior, this will be a much more powerful and useful tool for you. Yeah. Got lots more if we get together. But, yeah, the I am yeah. capable. That's that I got to um, interesting on that. You know how people think, oh, right. I can't do something technical. Do we need to? No. Oh, okay. We're just talking um, right now. Yeah. I'll the, grab my um, water. The, I'll find it. I don't know where it went. Um, the, I do. Okay, there you go. Um, the, yeah, I think a lot of times people, when they're trying to learn, um, things you know am i capable right like especially technology too because it right. changes so fast um i'm curious if we can do this technique on oneself as a proxy for a loved one of course with permission from that individual um it's a good question and the so uh let me answer that one first and i see another one from mm -hmm. Margo a second. So uh, can you do it for somebody else? If they're incapable of doing it for them, uh, the, the best thing would be if you could get together with them physically, as I am with Mary, as you remember when I was tapping on her head and talking about my arm, so I was talking as if I were the voice within her head. Now, if she were doing this on her own, she would also use first person language and say, and talk about, for instance, her arm or her ability to learn, her ability to remember, whatever it is that is a matter of concern. And it's, it's a tapping, it's not a rubbing. So it's, it's staccato, mm -hmm. so you should you should feel discrete taps on the head. It it doesn't need to hurt, but it but it shouldn't feel like a rub. And it's always front to back. It's not back to front, 
better not to cross over to the other side if you can help it. Uh, in terms of the... So doing it for a surrogate, is that... It says surgery. Well, no, um, she's um, talking about... Um, yes, so... So to do it, it as proxy or like right, a surrogate. Right, so supposing you have a family member uh, who can't raise their arm, they can under, they would need to preferably be able to understand what you're saying. Well, what you if somebody talk, lived in a different city? Well, if they have a computer and you can show them on Zoom what to do, that would be good. Or go visit them. <laughs> or send them a copy of the paperwork and talk with them about what they're going to do. So this this is not a hard technique. One of the things I found out early in practice is if you give people something to do that's inherently difficult or complicated, the odds of them utilizing it go way down. So the question about the resistance to, sur to necessary surgery, um, you want to think about if the fear is coming from uh, sit, you know, safety issues, uh, being unconscious issues, the, the more detailed you can go, uh, the better. And you can phrase anything for either side. So for instance, we got Mary's arm to get stronger or weaker using either side of the head and either kind of language. So you just have to match the language to the side of the head you're using. And uh, that'll be clear when I send you the papers, if it's not already. But just to clarify that, it sounds like um, she needs to get a little more clear on what the fears are that are connected to the resistance. If it, Would if you say? It, if, it, if it's possible, you can just say... Uh, I guess you can douse and ask. I'm, um, I'm a, you could just, on the left side, say... Uh, I feel okay about having the surgery. On the right side, you could say, uh, I don't feel good about putting off the surgery, or I don't feel good about canceling the surgery. <coughs> Does that make sense? Or uh, even, even, I know I'll feel better after I've had the surgery and recover. Not having the surgery would <clears throat> increase um, my pain. Right. Would you do something like that? De depending on what surgery is for, and um, I won't pry about what the surgery is for, but it's listed as necessary. So, uh, how about something like, uh, I can do what I need to do feeling confident about a good outcome. So whatever you would do as an affirmation, what we're going to do is amplify it by getting your nervous system to work with you as a partner on it, rather than leave that resistance troublemaker uh, to negate what you know is good for you. So logically, if you know that uh, the surgery is necessary and you know that putting it off is more dangerous than having it, uh, you could do that. And I guess, is there a question, maybe confidence in your surgeon or the <clears throat> there's a there's layers right. i think oh yeah so if if you feel like the particular person who is currently assigned to the task of performing the surgery for one reason or other is not a good match for you you can you can and, douse and, that. And, and you can douse that and tell that then you pick a different person to do the that's perform that service Mm -hmm. so uh let's see 
Wow. Oh, I can get I can get the lights back on a second. Uh, <laughs> they they're on a timer, but if there's any other questions, we'll have to cover them fairly quickly. Yeah, uh, you have a, a question. Put it in the chat real quick because we're about to wrap up. Oh, there we go. Thanks. Okay, looks good. He. We're back. How how fantastic was this? Um, I can see there's did, just did, a wealth of information. Did you learn anything that you can use, and was it clear or was it more confusing? Uh, I love teaching because that spreads out the uh, the benefit, yeah. and I, I love teaching doctors, especially so if somebody lives far away from Houston, Texas but they would like to have a chiropractor or MD or osteopath, uh, naturopath, learn the work uh, from me, have them get in touch. Uh, and when I write to you, I can, uh, MD's great. She's in Australia. Oh, you're in Australia. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All we right. have some folks from all over um, Colorado mm -hmm. and Australia and Arizona. And... That's, that's great. Well, I'd, I would love to be able to tell people, no, you don't have to fly into <laughs> here. But if, it, if it's for a class for doctors, I think at this point, I'd feel better about teaching that in person. Right. Now, I'm also not averse to travel and uh, if there's a, a group of doctors, for instance, in Australia, then I can consider doing something like going to uh, Australia or Colorado or wherever somewhere else. <laughs> I, I have students all over the place. But uh, let's see, lots of requests okay. for online classes. So I think that okay. that might be upcoming for you um it, it might be and uh i'm in the process of figuring that out uh do we, can, are there, we are there some... clear any resistance to that <laughs> i don't really have a lot of resistance to that i've just been incredibly busy, busy. I, I stayed booked out a couple of months in advance there was a question um do you see um clients online a few okay so um, uh, so i am open to to, to that Okay, and Stuart's contact information was on the email, and it'll go back out on the um, unless you want to have your tell them your website now. Um, okay, uh, my uh, current main website is head h e a d. We're going to put that into the chat. Yeah. The numeral two. Foot f o o t dot com. Okay, headdevilt.com. So that's how you can get in touch with Dr. Marmosey. Yeah, there is, there is a contact form <clears throat> in there. Uh, we have lots of gratitude. Um, oh, uh, which side do you tap on for the affirmation? Well, you can use either side. So if you, want, if you wanted to say, I am very good at, I would do that on the left. Uh, if I wanted to say... Uh, I don't have any problem with, or there isn't anything in the way of my, it's negatively free. The, the language is negative. If it has the word not or uns in there, like don't, uh, yeah, that would go on the right side. So you can, you can use both sides, whatever you're comfortable with. You don't have to use both. You can just choose but it, one. But it's nice to know how to use either one so that uh, whatever comes natural to you in terms of your comfortable self-expression, you can use either side for any project you're trying to accomplish. Oh, what is your email so okay. they can... So, um, so you can write the... Okay. You have... RL, the head to foot dot com. Mm -hmm. So just Dr. Stewart, which is D R S T U A R T at head to foot dot com.
Okay, there's an extra ad at the beginning. Oh, and, sorry about that. And that's okay. <laughs> so forget that the, the Dr. Stewart so, at head to foot dot com. Does that look right? Yeah, it looks okay. great. So they can send you an email directly. Um and I we should have done that. <laughs> well, well Y'all we'll, send him an email directly and he will send you the PDF. Right. And if if we happen to if anybody left early, I'll still uh, respond to whatever yeah. emails Mary has. She's been so great tonight, both to <laughs> facilitate this, film it, and uh, serve as uh, chief example officer. <laughs> oh, it's been great. I appreciate it. Every time we're together, I just learn new things, and I'm so curious about what you do and I'm fascinated with the body and what it can do. And I, I see your, just, um, your curiosity and how you continue to learn things and then apply them and teach them. And I love that. So just can't help myself. So to learn more, um, we I invite you to, um, take, uh, come to Houston in a couple weeks, three weeks, um, and take, uh, Dr. Stewart's class and learn hands-on um, these techniques. So, and I'm sure there's, you know, he's a wealth of information. So I'm sure there's a whole lot more that will, when, you when know. It's, when it's possible, it's nice to be able to do it that way. And uh, we'll send you information about the, the registration. If you are local or it's not too much of a trip for you, then we'll do it. We have had people fly in for these classes before. And, uh, but if uh, you're saying for whatever reason that's not going to work right now, uh, I would like to get this out to more people and ultimately have it to where uh, there's another way to access me and the information. Thanks again. Um. And, uh, yeah, thank you all. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, and if you want to unmute yourself and, well, I don't know that it'll be kind of garbled. Um, could be a little garbled. <laughs> could be a little garbled and just say good night. We can thank do you that. Thank so much. We love you to be. Thank um, you. Thank thanks you so much. Yeah. Great to see you. Thanks for helping with the right. surgery. Good night. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you for spending your time here with oh, me tonight. Oh, great.